Hi guys, welcome to PencilCollege.com Okay, so in this video, we'll be looking at the final two examples for chapter 13.4, which is about the factor formula. Okay, so without further ado, let us proceed straight to example number three. In example number three, we're asked to prove that the left-hand side of this identity is equal to the right-hand side of this identity. Okay, so how are we going to do it? Okay, so what we're going to do first is to apply the factor formula which is being highlighted in yellow now okay on the numerator so first let us identify our parameters so in this case our p is 6x and our q is 2x okay so by using the factor formula i will arrive at 2 cosine half of p plus q which is 6x plus 2x so the, this is the left hand side of my function okay 2 cosine half 6x plus 2x sine half 6x minus 2x okay this is what we have for the numerator over here next we will move on to apply the factor formula on the denominator okay on the denominator so the denominator is in this form, okay, so I'm going to apply it to the denominator. So in this case, okay, let me use a different color to make it more obvious. In this case, my P is also 6X and my Q is also 2X. So using the factor formula, this will give me negative 2 sine half of 6X plus 2X sine 6x minus 2x okay so let us just try to simplify as much as we can so in the numerator we have 2 cosine so half times 6x plus 2x is just 4x okay and the sine of half times 6x minus 2x is just sine of 2x okay and in the denominator we have negative 2 sine of 4x sine of 2x okay so at this point in time you'll see that something really magical is happening because we can sort of eliminate the sine 2x by dividing throughout by sine 2x and we can also divide throughout by 2 okay and this leaves me okay, and this leaves me with the final answer which is just negative of cotangent 4x why is this so? Okay, for those of you who have forgotten, recall that cotangent theta is actually cosine of theta over the sine of theta. Therefore, cosine 4x divided by sine 4x will give me cotangent 4x. As, as for the negative sign, it comes from the negative sign over here in the denominator. Okay, and this is just equals to my right hand side. So RHS stands for right hand side. And I'll write proved. Okay. I hope this was simple for you guys. Okay, that's all for example number three. Okay, so for this seemingly difficult looking equation, what we will do is to shift negative sine 5x over to the left hand side of the equation. So I'll end up with sine 5x plus sine x plus sine of 3x equals to zero okay then we will apply factor formula on the yellow highlighted portion okay so let me make it more obvious so i'll be using the first formula over here okay so similarly let us identify the parameter so p will be 5x and q will just be x okay so breaking this down i'll have two sine 5x plus x divided by 2 okay so half of 5x plus x cosine half of 5x minus x plus sine of 3x equals to 0 okay so breaking this down even further i will have 2 sine 3x cosine 2x plus sine of 3x equals to 0 Okay, factorizing out the sine of 3x, I will have this. 
and then from here we will have two scenarios so the first scenario will be when sine x okay will be sine 3x rather equals to 0 and the second scenario will be 2 cosine 2x plus 1 equals to 0 which can be simplified to become cosine 2x equals to negative half okay now the key thing to take note here is that the range of x has already evolved okay or changed okay because previously we had x to be between 0 to 180 degrees but now that we have 2x the range of 2x will be between 0 to 360 degrees okay just by multiplying 2 throughout this inequality now how about that for 3x the range of 3x should be that of 0 to 540 degrees okay by multiplying 3 to the in the initial inequality over here okay so 3x that what are the possible values for 3x then we have 0 degrees 180 degrees 360 degrees and 540 degrees okay the easiest way to see this is probably by sketching the sine curve okay the sine curve so since this video is not uh, you know fully into the discussion of the sine curve okay I shall not elaborate that in uh, so much detail okay if you want to know more about the sine curve please catch the video on sine curve okay so okay that's actually under ch chapter 11.3 okay so for x we will just divide these values by 3 okay and this will give me 0 60 120 degrees and 180 degrees now how about the second scenario or the second case over here okay so since cosine 2x is a negative value we can either be in the sine quadrant or the tangent quadrant okay let us explore the possibility of being in the sine quadrant so over here okay we have our 2x and as per usual let me draw in my right angle triangle Okay, and similarly identify the basic angle alpha which is over here okay so this is alpha so I'll write 2x to be 180 degrees oh sorry I uh, missed up my alpha so alpha should just be cosine inverse of half okay which is just 60 degrees Okay, so also take note that um, for to find alpha basic angle, we always ignore or omit the negative sign. Okay, so let's move on to find our next possibility, which is in the tangent quadrant. So 2x can also be up to here. So 2x, and if 2x is here, my right angle triangle should be here, and my basic angle alpha should be over here. Okay, so this is my alpha. Okay, so in this case, what, what, what are the two possibilities for x? It should be, or rather should be for 2x. Okay, it should be 180 degrees plus alpha, or rather minus alpha first. Or 180 degrees plus alpha. Okay, so the corresponding values of x we just divide this by 2 okay and this will give me just 60 or 120 degrees okay so 60 or 120 degrees okay which uh, this va these two values are actually also spotted or rather found here in the first case Okay, so therefore, just to conclude, I'll just write a, a, a conclusion. So therefore, x can be 0, 60, 120 degrees, or 180 degrees. And that's all for example number 4. Okay, so with this, we have come to the end of the entire of chapter 13. And uh, just to summarize, for the factor formula, there are in fact 4 of them. Okay, you need to really uh, know how to apply them. Okay, these formulas should be provided during the uh, O-level exam, so don't have to uh, get down to memorizing them. And uh, just leave you with some practice questions. Feel free to pause the video here to take them down. 
And finally, thank you for watching this video and you know being together with us throughout the entire chapter 13. I hope you have enjoyed this. For more videos, please log on to pencilcollege.com. I'll see ya!